everybody, Sam Heine here, uh, checking in with a less traditional form of street talk, but I'm here nonetheless. Uh, we, uh, we took a little interview hiatus for the week of Derby. Um, I'll be back at you this next week. I've actually got two, two set interviews coming up, um, maybe three, but um, I have one in Clifton. I ha I'm talking to somebody that is going, uh, he's just got a great perspective on what's going on in Clifton. He's been in there since, you know, the 80s, the early 80s, and um, he's really had a chance to watch it evolve because 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, Clifton was not what it is today. You know, now it's almost an extension of Crescent Hill and it's beautiful and, uh, you know, a lot of restaurants moving in, uh, a lot of bars moving in, a lot of, a lot of residents moving in. But it was not that way once before. There's a, a great development story going on um, that is, is you sort of see, you, so, you see it today as it played out. And uh, I'm gonna go get that perspective for you guys. Uh, the other one, I'm talking to. I can't say the name. Okay, we gotta we gotta keep it. We gotta keep some element of surprise here. But I'm gonna go in and talk to somebody that's really involved in the development of Germantown, but more specifically the Mill District, the old Mill District um, of the early 1900s, mid 1900s. Um, you know, back in the day, whenever it was a hustling and a bustling blue collar. Uh, district where people worked in wool mills and, and really uh, really made it happen for the city. Um, and so uh, I'm going to go get some perspective on that as well, so stay tuned. Um, but this week I figured with a little hiatus I'd come on and just kind of explain a little bit because I don't think I ever did. I just kind of started it pretty suddenly, this little uh, uh, interview series. But I thought, it, you know, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, and I wanted to give you all a little bit of an explanation on why I delved into this project. Um, and, you know, it was, I started it about a year ago, but, um, you know, really turn of the year, I really turned it up and I'm just, I'm meeting with all these people around town, decision makers, business owners, uh, people doing things that inspire me, you know, inspire, inspire me and sort of inspire neighborhoods and just people that are making a big difference around town and different neighborhoods and pockets of the city. Um, you know, and I, I remember specifically I was walking out of, of this really great conversation that I had. I was walking out of a coffee shop. I was talking to an architect around town. And I was just, you know, just a great conversation. And it, it sort of changes your mood for the better when you have a great two-way conversation. You both feel like you, you left it with more than what you came in for. Um, you know, and, and I was just like, man, these are great conversations. You know, you could almost put that on tape and put it out. It's so informational. You're talking to something relevant, talking about something relevant to an entire city. You know, you're talking about a neighborhood and, and the development, what happened in the past, you know, what it looked like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, what it's going to look like in 10 years, what's going on, you know, and, and uh, talking about specifically who I'm talking to and what hand they play in it, what hand I play in it, and sort of meeting in the middle there and discussing the... Uh, you know, the, the synchronicities. And uh, so that's really how it started. You know, I'm having the, all these great conversations and I would be having all these great conversations still, and I am, but you know, uh, there's a lot more conversations going on that are not interviews. But I just decided, you know, I'm just gonna put these conversations in tape form. I'm gonna put them out to, you know, the, the people of Louisville and hopefully they, they find it valuable and learn something about it. You know, learn something about the city that they might not have known because, you know, I'm a Highlands guy, born and raised, and, 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 you know, going into the West End last week to talk to Yvonne Smith, it was a little out of my comfort zone, you know, I'll be, I'll be quite frank with you, I'm not as informed on the West End as I am on the Highlands, just because, you know, I don't have the opportunity to go there as much. I'm from the Highlands. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's worth, you know, investing your time into doing some digging and, and really figuring out you know, what's going on in these different pockets of town that you don't go into a whole lot. You don't really talk to people from those parts of town. So I'm bringing that story to the surface and making it more accessible to other people that live in the city because I think it's an interesting story. And I think uh, hopefully a lot of people, other people around the area are uh, thinking they're interesting stories. And then also, you know, as a realtor, it's my job to stay informed on these different pockets. So that's where these conversations, I'm motivated to get out and talk to people, decision makers, people that know what's going on, know what's coming, um, and just milking that, you know, that story out of them. And uh, so I'm, you know, it's my job to stay informed on these things. I'm a resource for, for people that are looking to move into a different neighborhood or they're curious about other neighborhoods in town and, and what the difference is, you know, what the historical difference is. 
um, you know, what the housing structures are like and what the differences are between different blocks of the city. Um, I want to be a resource for people, and that's my job, uh, being in real estate. So that's another big thing. I'm learning a ton by going around and actually, you know, hearing the story straight from the horse's mouth. So um, I'm, I'm super motivated to, uh, to continue that work. So that's it's sort of a two-way uh, two answer, but, you know, hopefully everybody's liking it. And like I said, no interview this week, but I, I just kind of wanted to, to give you all some perspective on, uh, you know, my motivation to get into, you know, putting the, the extra effort into curating these uh, video formats that uh, these conversations that I was having. So hopefully you all are enjoying them. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to um, see anything in particular, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to to dive a little deeper on certain issues if the, the demand there and if people are wondering about certain areas. Um, I'm always looking for new ideas. And, and once again, you know, if you have any questions or inquiries, curiosities at all related to real estate, the different neighborhoods around town, always feel free to reach out to me. That's what I do. That's what I love. Uh, my number is 502-500-6469 uh, or shoot me an email at sam at familyrealty.com. I'm happy to help in any way. So uh, without further ado, um, it's funny. I, I said without further ado as if the interview is about to start. It's ingrained in my mind, but you're going to have to wait till next week to see all that. Um, I could have edited that out, but just so you know, I'm, I'm shooting this in one take, folks. Okay, this is, this is real right here. Uh, but I will see you next week. Uh, I'm going to have some really great conversations this week, and uh, we'll see you Sunday. So everybody have a great rest of the weekend.